Think about the small goals. Think about being consistent. Think about the big picture. Welcome to Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast. I am your host, Dr. Weta L. Brown. I inspire and promote movement. I explain how running adds to life from a mental wholeness aspect. How obstacles can be overcome in life to make it to your finish line. Welcome to Running is Cheaper Than Therapy. Episode 51, Season 4. Again, I want to thank all of my listeners, old, new, those who support me in this new journey, although I've been doing it a year. I found that it is very fun, but a lot of hard work. And I also want to say Happy New Year. Today's episode is called New Year, New You. I find that every new year, people make resolutions. Things they want to change or do just because it's a new year. We all think something magical is going to happen just because a new calendar year is upon us. While I do love New Year's, except last year due to COVID, I don't usually make resolutions. I do see it as a time of reflection. And I always think about goals and aspirations that I have in mind. I do reflect and I may hone in on a plan. Also, my church always has a fast every January. It is a time to pray and give up something and focus on God. Focus on God for guidance for the new year. We do what's called the Daniel Fast, and it is a very strict vegan diet. I used to be 100% vegan. On the plan is actually stricter than 100% vegan diet because there are no sweets. No sodas, which I used to not drink, but I've started to drink. At least have one or two a week. So I gave up sodas. I used to chew gum like crazy. I gave up that one year and sweets. I'm not really a big sweet person, but um, I do eat sweets from time to time. And I do like to snack every now and then. Mainly salty stuff. Now I'm more um, pescatarian. I eat fish. Um, or sometimes I'm a flexitarian. Sometimes I do eat chicken, but I try to eat that grass fed chicken. Um, and when it comes to sweets, I'm not that strict because I'm sure it's butter, which is not vegan. So I'm more flexitarian because I chose a vegan lifestyle initially because I read a book, which I'm not sure if it was medically correct, but it talked about how hormones in some of the, um, additives they put in meat cause breast cancer. And I had a friend from college who had recently died from breast cancer. So that book and that statement stuck with me well and I stopped eating meat. I also found that I was healthier and I lost weight at the time. But since I've been doing endurance sports, I feel like I need a lot more protein. While you can get enough protein from eating a total plant-based diet, it's more difficult. particularly. If you eat a lot of processed vegan food, such as Gardena or any of the um, Boca burgers, a lot of those are soy-based, and I can't eat a lot of soy. It causes me to have um, stomach issues. I got a rash because I was with a nutritionist, and she put me on a a diet where I basically stopped eating soy. And some issues I had, I had a rash, I had some stomach issues, they all went away. I can't eat a lot of soy, so I started back eating um, fish to get some more protein. But the Daniel Fast and this is a strict vegan diet with, with no sugar. We do that for a month. So again, I use the new year 
That's a reflection, a time to reflect on things that I want to accomplish in the next calendar year. So we're going to talk about running, triathlons, fitness, skiing. So many people have fitness goals related to weight. They want to lose so many pounds and they want to run a marathon, want to do a triathlon. I find that in formulating goals and staying consistent, the problem with a lot of people, January, they're all in, going to the gym every day, running every day, or whatever your goal is. By February, March, not consistent and those goals kind of dissipate. So I find less is more. And the key is consistency. Whatever goal you set, it's not magically going to happen because it's January of a new year. I'm going to share with you some of the things that I will be working on in 2022. I need to lose about 20 pounds. I would like to lose about 20 to 30 pounds, actually. I've gained weight due to COVID. And I also gained weight after I had surgery. Actually, it's been about 13 months since I had knee surgery. I lost some, but I need to lose some more. I would like to at least. So I want to lose 20 to 30 pounds. And what I typically do is try to concentrate on five pound increments. Particularly, say, I weigh so and so five pounds. <laughs> so I lose those five pounds. And then my goal would be to go into the next five pound increments. That way it's not as massive goal. It takes a while to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds. And the key to weight loss and keeping it off, again, is consistency. But you can't starve yourself for so much time, lose weight, and then go back to eating because you're going to gain it right back. And that process, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, is not healthy. And I, I've, I've been in that situation. I'm an emotional eater. So, and I also try to focus on why, say, I'm eating more than what I need to sustain me for for life and for doing activities. And I track everything I eat. I use my fitness pal, track everything I eat, and then I track my workouts as well. Because days I do a lot of workouts, of course, I'm going to need to eat more. If not, I'm going to pass out. So again, I concentrate on those five pound increments. And I concentrate on health and energy and feeling well and not just focus, oh, I got to lose this this tremendous amount of weight because it can be overwhelming. I feel like if you starve yourself or you eliminate a certain amount of food, it's like when you were a kid and your mother said, like, don't touch the stove or don't do this or don't do that. What you have to think about the thing that she told you not to do. So if I'm eliminating, say, what do I like to eat? That may not be low Caloric. I'm not going to say bad food because good and bad food is not a good thing to say about what we eat. So something I like to eat that has a lot of calories. Say I like apple fritters. Um, so they have a lot of sugar, fat. If I say no apple fritters for a year, I'm going to want an apple fritter when I go to Seven Eleven. They're going to it's going to be calling my name. So if I have one every now and then, I'm less likely to go crazy when I want some sugar or want something that is a quote-unquote bad food. Also, I found that giving yourself grace, say you have a bad day and eat two apple fritters or whatever your advice is, it's just an example. But don't give up or don't go crazy and eat everything in sight or everything that you, hmm, I haven't had that in a long time. Just chalk it off to being a bad day. And tomorrow will be a better day. And don't use working out as a penalty or as a, as a outlet or a, um, I can eat now because I worked out two hours or whatever you did. Don't use working out as a gift or a punishment for eating too much. Also, I would like to be able to complete Ironman in August. 
of 2022, which is a massive goal. So instead of thinking about that massive goal, I'm going to concentrate on consistency. Less is more. I'm going to concentrate on doing at least 90% of the workouts my coach puts on my training peak. I'm going to concentrate on getting better in all three disciplines, but I'm going to concentrate on consistency. I'm not going to concentrate on the fact that I may not tomorrow ride the speed <laughs> that I want to ride on race day. I may not ride 112 miles that I'm going to need to ride on race day. I'm not going to try to PR or get a personal best on every workout because that, first of all, is not realistic. Second of all, it can cause burnout. And also, particularly running, if you go trying to PR and make every run your best, you may get injured. And so you can't be consistent because you'll be recovering. So think about the small goals. Think about being consistent. Think about the big picture. Think about the journey. Say, for whatever reason, I don't make it to my August goal. I'm going to enjoy the journey. And I'll just kick ass on a 70.3. And maybe 23 will be my year. But I'm going to keep the faith and do what I can. But I'm not going to stress myself out and get to the point where it's not fun anymore. Season four, we will continue the segment, Ask the Doc. If you have any muscular and skeletal questions, please go to my website, click on the link, leave voice message, leave your question, and select questions will be answered on the segment. I love my hobbies, all of them, because... I feel better. It makes me a more healthy person. I love the people. I love the experiences. I love the travel. So when it gets to the point where it's no longer fun, like, why am I doing this? Another goal that I have is I want to be able to ski like I was able to ski in March of 2020 before I had my crash and hurt my knee that required surgery. Went on my first ski trip. The second week in December, while it was fun and we didn't have that much snow, it was difficult for me to get back into it. I mean, I remembered how to ski, but my knee was still weak from surgery and skiing involves a lot of flexing your knee, bending your knee, straightening your knee, like every turn, every turn. So I was really guarding my left knee and particularly when we got into some more difficult terrain and when there was more snow like toward the end of we were there like four days it was more stress on my knee and then I was thinking about it the whole time instead of me thinking about my turns and focusing on this I was concentrating on my knee because I didn't want it to give out and then after you're injured I found after I went back to cycling after I crashed on my bike particularly the first time, not so much now, it's like you're scared that it's going to happen again. It's like, I don't want to fall. I don't want to hurt myself. It's like I'm being overly cautious. It's like like I couldn't let go and just ski unless I was on like easy room terrain and I can actually felt like I was cruising. But the more difficult stuff, I felt like I was analyzing everything, my knee, and I took a lesson and they videoed us and they could tell that I was really guarding my knee because in order to do great turns, you really need to flex your knee. And it bothered me. So my goal is to concentrate on strengthening my knee. Maybe go to the local mountain just to practice before I go back out west in the end of January. February, and I might do another trip in March to concentrate on my knee so I can withstand um, the flexion extension because I really want to get back to being as well as I did before. 
and being more confident, particularly because I want to race. I'm the race director for my ski club, so I figured like, I need to race. And the last time I raced, I raced um, advanced, so I want to go back to that category. But I'll be okay if I drop down to intermediate racing because, again, less is sometimes more. The goal is to enjoy the journey and I don't want to hurt myself. And I want to have fun in the ski season and not be in pain because I was kind of hurting when I came back on Sunday. And I don't like to hurt because I have too much stuff to do. So my goal is strength training and continued progression of my skiing. When I was actually doing therapy, when I had knee surgery, my therapist always used to say that I'm more concentrated on the big picture, running, cycling, even swimming, because I was having shoulder issues at the time as well. Instead of doing, I call them boring exercises, some of those band exercises and those little exercises that work on um, your glutes, on your butt muscles. Those are very important. They're weak, put more pressure on your knee. I was more concentrated on those instead of doing my exercise, which I did go to therapy. I found that as I progressed in doing more activities that I sometimes neglect doing my exercises. So I'm going to be more diligent. I'm not the best patient and I'm busy. So I'm going to have to make time to do some strength training. It doesn't have to be like, I don't have to be a gym rat, which I'm not, but there's things I can do at home to strengthen my knee and also my shoulder because I don't want my shoulder pain to come back because I've had shoulder issues, which affects my swimming and actually affects cycling as well. My keys to success in 2022 and beyond is less is more. Less is more. Also, find the joy in the journey. Find the joy in the journey. Whatever your goal is. It's, I'm going to take this outside of fitness. Whatever your goal is. I mean, I was in school forever. And while those nights when I was up all night studying and, <laughs> and, and being broke and, you know, everything you do as a student. I enjoy my time in college. Even in med school, I had fun and I made some lifelong friendships. So enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process. It may have some painful or some not as enjoyable moments, but enjoy the overall process. Enjoy the process. And find your tribe. The reason I love my hobbies is not only the sports and in the South. I love doing triathlons. I love cycling. I love skin, but I love the people. They're part of my family. They care about me. When I had surgery, several of my tri family brought me food because I was on crutches for four weeks. Took me to the doctor because I couldn't drive initially. Even when I was skiing in December, Several of them told me to take it easy on the slopes and make sure that I didn't do too much because sometimes DTM, do too much, is me. So I really have to concentrate on the less is more concept. Why? Because I've done the opposite. When I started running in 2010, I didn't have a coach at the time. I just got some online training program to do a half marathon and then I progressed to doing a marathon I signed up for races like every race every race have marathon here have marathon there travel here travel there marathon here marathon maniacs I did three marathons in three months I was everywhere I got a running coach because I wanted to speed up and I realized that I had a lot of injuries and as soon as my run coach looked at all the races that I've done and the amount of time I've done, and I had only been running at that time, like a year and a half, two years, she said, this is why you're injured. You do too much. And even after she took me on as a client, 
I had injured my knee, which was random. I went on a trail run after I did the three marathons in three months. Um, I went on a, a trail run. I call it a trail run because it was snow everywhere. And I think I ran seven miles, which is right not too long after I ran a marathon, which I should have been resting. But my knee swelled up, and then I wound up having a meniscus tear and having surgery ultimately. But I still was trying to do too much. So she actually fired me. And I also got fired by another coach because he thought I was trying to do too much after I had surgery. Had surgery in May, and my plan was to do two marathons in September. And my therapist looked at me like I was crazy. And my coach thought I was crazy too. So he fired me too. So do too much. She's gotten fired by two coaches. Less is more. So again, your your tribe is important. So it's fun when I go race and I see other people and I meet other people and random people encourage me and give me tips. And when I travel the world and, and the people, like my ski group, we've been to France, we've been to Japan, I've run in Germany, Bermuda Triangle, Jamaica. I've gone with friends and met new friends. I actually, this is this is kind of funny. When I was doing um, a run in Jamaica, we were getting ready for the race. So right before the race, I stopped by the restroom and I ran into one of my college classmates I hadn't seen in years. And then the following year, I went and stayed with her and met her crew. So I made new friends. And actually, one of those friends I met was actually on podcast, Dr. Erica. So... Tribe is important and it enlarges your circle of friends and networks. And I love people and I love connecting people and I love having friends all over. So this fits me and it makes me want to get back to doing the sports I love. After I had surgery, um, actually I bought me some skis (laughs) for Christmas last year, some race skis. And I kept them in my corner. It was kind of to motivate me to continue so I can get back to racing so I can use those racing skis. So as we embark on another year, 2022, I pray that you all have a safe and prosperous year. I pray that COVID is gone soon. We're hopefully another year. When that passed and COVID is still around, I pray that you reach your goals and aspirations and have fun and enjoy the process. If you have any goals, aspirations, the things that keep you motivated and keep you consistent, please share. I can be reached via social media, via my email. I also can be reached on my website. So reach out. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. That wraps up this episode of Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast. Thank you for tuning in. If you already haven't, please download Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast on Apple, Spotify, or however you listen to your favorite podcast. If you have any questions, concerns, or possible show topics, Please email Run It Is Cheaper Than Therapy, OLB, Omaha Love Brown. Again, that's Run It Is Cheaper Than Therapy, Omaha Love Brown at gmail.com. I also can be reached via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Handle We Life, We Love. O U I Life, O U I Love. Thank you, and please tune in again. <laughs>